Good day, everybody. So yesterday, I asked you all on my YouTube's community page what video you wanted to see next. The vote spoke for themselves. You guys wanted to see how my red-eyed crocodile skink pair is doing. For those of you who don't know about them, that's Sunny and Sappy. So, since that's what you guys wanted to see, we're going to be doing an update video on them today. And as I mentioned in that question, the good and the bad. Alright guys, so this is Sappy and Sunny's enclosure. Ironically, temporary enclosure still, while I figure out things for making their paludarium. Um, I mean, it kind of is a paludarium, but not really. It just has like a container in the corner that has filtration and a bridge. Funny, uh, Sunny started sleeping under this bridge. He just sticks his head under and like his whole body's hanging out the side as if he thinks no one sees him at night. But weirdly enough, they have a really deep burrow down under here. Um, we have different kinds of peperomias and pothos and baby tears growing in the enclosure. It's a really beautiful tank. It's grown in quite nicely. It is trimmed back recently, so it was really growing in thick before. This just allows some of the plants to keep growing healthy and um, not grow too weak and stretched out. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can lure them out because as many of you know, I'm trying to avoid this reflection because you can see me there, it's not very easy. But as many of you may know, these animals are actually very shy. Um, they don't really like to be handled or anything like that. So as I always stress in my videos on this species, if you're looking for a pet that you can handle a lot, not a choice for you. I know there's plenty of viral videos out there that show them um, being handled. I'm just going to gently move it a smidge in so I can easily open the tank. Lots of videos showing them being handled on the internet. It's not recommended. They really don't appreciate it. And they're the type of animal that usually sort of freezes up instead of bolts, which gives the illusion that they're not minding. They are. That being said, my animals are a weird exception. I don't go holding them, like ever. Literally the last time I held my crocodile skinks was my last video, probably back in November, I think, or whenever that was, where I had them. No, not even October. And yeah, they don't seem to mind too much, but the main reason why I say that they're a weird exception is because they actually are a lot more bold and less shy. You're gonna see that shyness when I start filming here, but watch. So we take a superworm, we present it to the glass, and I can almost bet you anything. Oh, I think you can see Sappy is ready. Hey, Sappy. Hi. Hello, girl. So this is Sappy, guys, and she is ready for her food. She knows when she hears a sliding door, she's already out and ready for me in the morning. Here you go, girl. See, she has her food now and she runs away. So you see that she's bold enough to come out for something to eat, shy enough that she wants to go back into the security of being under the wood. So she's actually somewhere back here. Well, the funny thing is as we continue to talk about the enclosure and such, She's gonna expose herself again. She'll make herself visible for us. So we'll zoom in a little closer so you guys can see. This is the water feature. It's actually just like a small Aquion submersible filter. I have some pieces of um, aquarium safe rock slate. This is a PetSmart little bridge. It's kind of adorable. Um, they do walk up and down from it into the water. Now it's very important for these animals to have direct access to a water feature. They do like to swim. Actually, a lot of keepers online will even say that they'll put shrimp and fish inside their enclosure and they're, they've noticed their animals hunting them. I think shrimp would be the safer option. A lot of feeder fish are full of parasites. Shrimp are not exactly a cheap alternative. I mean, ghost shrimp perhaps, but those are becoming a bit less common in certain places and the price is driven up. But um, yeah, so they can eat interesting uh, crustaceans like that. They do enjoy earthworms. Mine in particular love crickets and superworms. I don't give them superworms all too often because they are a fattier prey source, but the crickets are um, a popular prey source for those animals. So there, there you go. Um, here, 
We have some of the plants growing in. There's a nice little rubber tree cutting in the back here, just pretty cool. The golden pothos and the driftwood is just a nice piece or two over here. And oh, look who's look who's coming out again. Let's see if they would like another one. So one of the problems for me is that Sappy, the female, is so much less uh, shy than the male, Sunny, which creates a bit of an issue when it comes to feeding because she's so bold, she'll just come out and take all the food before Sunny gets any. So that, that is kind of annoying. Um, as you can see here, she just ran down. I threw a super worm down hoping that he can get to it. She's probably going to find it before he does. Oh, let me try. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, crud. Well, watch. There it goes. Yeah, I think she's going to get it. You can see Sappy wandering around in there. Oh, she just got it. Dang it. I'm gonna be real with you guys, I had a bit of a scare just there. Um, I kept trying to like lure Sonny out to eat and he wasn't coming out at all and I was kind of freaking out a little, maybe overreacting, that something might have been wrong because at the end of the day he was a wild caught red-eyed crocodile skink and I don't know how old he actually is. So it kind of freaked me out, I was concerned that maybe something bad happened. So if you're wondering why all of a sudden the cut scene here, the, the enclosure looks quite different. It's because I kind of rummaged around through there to make sure he was okay, and I found him hidden. He made this tunnel under a f uh, up the rubber tree, and he was just sitting there looking at me. I was like, you, you little bum, basically. <laughs> Scared me, but yeah. So this is their enclosure. Um, bottom line, I hope you enjoy it. I've really, really been fond of how it's grown in, and Tempest really did a lot of the work with this tank. It looks really really nice she did an awesome job um yeah so maybe we'll try offering one more super worm to whoever is going to come out for it and then we can go from there and i can talk a little bit about some of the unfortunate news pertaining to these guys do you want a worm would you like a super worm come on yeah now that they're a little startled by my intrusion Oh, what am I seeing? She's like, I'm not startled by your intrusion. Come on, girl. Do you want a worm? Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, now that they're a little startled by my intrusion, they're less, like, so chill. So, I'm sorry, guys. A little bit about their care. Uh, I keep them around 78 to 80 Fahrenheit tops. Really, if they get up here under the T5, it is a lot warmer, so they get more heat when they come up here and bask in the morning sometimes. But overall, the ambient temperature in here it doesn't really get much higher than 75. They like to be cooler and they go down into the soil, and that's where they live most of the time. So they like to be cooler. Um, I'm feeding them probably about three times a week, not much more than that. I don't overfeed these guys. Uh, they get dusted their food once or twice, probably about once a week or every other week I dust their food with the Reptical Calcium with D3 and the Herptivite. So I mix the two together, even parts, and dust their crickets or superworms with them. Water gets changed out and refilled every few days and they get a good spraying all over everything. I see them climb up and they like to lap the water off the leaves, but they can also drink out of the feature, obviously. But it's funny that despite that, I see them always coming out and drinking when I spray the enclosure down. But yeah, they're beautiful animals. They're really curious. Like I said, mine are bold. They do come out for me sometimes. Uh, an interesting fact is that the more cover you give them, the more out in the open they'll be with this species. I find that if you give them the opportunity to feel very safe, they feel more safe coming out and they do so more often, whereas if there's like one hiding cave, they're never going to come out because they feel too exposed coming out more in the open. But if they feel like they have a million options to get away and hide, then they're out more, if that makes sense. Alright. So if you guys are following me on Instagram, you may know that a few months ago I posted some exciting news that I had hatched my first red-eyed crocodile skink baby. 
All right, guys, so this is who we found. I am ecstatic. This is a baby red-eyed crocodile skink. I mean, I feel like I'm literally looking at a little dinosaur right here. There's still the yolk attached, so we're just gonna leave it after this, let it rest. Um, I probably should have just held the brakes a bit with that post, because what I didn't realize till after posting and everything and starting to, you know, make the home and bring the baby into it was that the baby was born with an organ not, how do I put it? The baby was born with some organ hanging out of its body. Now I know what some of you might be thinking, no, no, that's probably just the yolk sac, but like, trust me, it was like a pink, I don't know, fleshy mass hanging outside of its body. So the first thing I did was left the animal alone. I kept it in the moist sphagnum moss because I figured that's more sanitary than putting it in its enclosure with dirt. I figure, okay, well, if this is by some weird chance it, part of a yolk sac, because it is sort of in that umbilical area, uh, it should fall off or be absorbed and fall off within at least a few days, if, or at most a few days, rather. That's what I meant to say. Uh, and then the following day, it was still very much there. Same shape, same size. Baby was acting weird, sensitive to the touch with gloves. And so I knew something was terribly wrong, and I wasn't sure what more to do. So I tried to set him up and hoped for some sort of miracle. But unfortunately, the following day, I went to check in on the baby and it had passed away. So breeding reptiles isn't always, it's not always magical. It's not always, um, you know, a beautiful experience. It has its challenges. And I think that's a video I'm going to make in the coming weeks also, just kind of talking like a disclaimer like it's not always butterflies and roses maybe that's a better way to put it it can be really heartbreaking especially when you're breeding animals like satanic leaf tail geckos that really was conflicting for me because i wasn't immersed in a world of every few babies might pass i mean i'm not i'm exaggerating there but like that that can happen and so i didn't know how to balance between Detaching myself of death, but holding on to my compassion and feeling sorrow over the death. I didn't want to lose that part of my humanity, if that makes sense. So, it's really hard. Losing a baby animal, or any animal, is never easy. Ultimately, every pet owner knows that assuming they fulfill their responsibility in keeping their pet its whole life, that is something that's inevitable, whether it comes sooner or later. But being able to experience the magic of breeding animals and hatching babies and that excitement and having them pass away so shortly after is, is a terrible experience. And yeah, so that is the bad news that I wanted to share with you. I'm hoping that Sunny and Sappy have more babies on the way. So that would be really awesome. I decided that if they do, or if they are laying eggs, I'm not gonna interfere and, and remove them and incubate them myself because these animals actually make really good parents. There are quite a few academic papers studying the maternal paternal behavior seen in this species and other skink species. This one in particular, the male and female actually move the egg around the enclosure uh, to provide the optimal incubation um, temperature, humidity, etc., which is fascinating to me. So I figured, you know, if they're that good of a parent, I'm going to try leaving them and seeing what they do, and hopefully some babies will show up in there. The way their ovulation cycle works is that every 75 days or so, the female ovulates and produces one egg. So the idea is that when one baby, or when one egg hatches, the female is now about to lay a second one. And during the time that that second egg is incubating, the baby's living with the parents, which is just really cool. Very unusual for reptiles, right? So, yeah, we're gonna see how that goes. Alas, it's a bit of a short video, but it's an update nonetheless, and you kind of saw us happy, which is fun. And I mean, I guess if you haven't seen some of that other footage I've shown in the past of Sappy and Sunny, I'll insert some so you at least see what Sunny looks like, since he had zero <laughs> camera action in this video he didn't want to show himself at all 
Um, but again, we have to respect that and it all emphasizes what I was saying about them being shy animals. I'm not going to pull them out, yank them out uh, to show them to you guys. I did that in a previous video because they were being moved into another enclosure anyway. So, alas, if you guys enjoy this video, please give Sappy and Sunny a thumbs up. If you haven't yet and you'd like to support me, feel free to subscribe down below. More videos coming every week and if you want, I'd recommend dinging the notification bell so that you know when my next video comes out. That way you can stay up to date and know when all the new content is coming and support me. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and I look forward to producing more content to show you guys soon. Let me know in the comment section down below what kind of content you'd like to see next. I enjoy having your feedback and hearing from you to know what I should produce and I think that's a good way to cater to your needs and wants. So. Go ahead and do that. Type away down there, or text, if you're watching it from a mobile phone. And let me know what you'd like to see next based on my collection. Thanks guys, see you later.